Hello, lovelies. Nightshade here, and um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's a lot of money. <laughs> So where do I begin? I actually finally made it to VIP 28. Some of you might be thinking, Nightshade, what are you talking about? There is no such thing as VIP 28. I cannot see it. It is not there. Well, actually, VIP 28 is very much a thing. However, unfortunately, the only way that it becomes visible is until you have reached VIP 23, which is basically spending $8,000. Once you reach VIP 23, VIP 24 immediately unlocks, showing you the rest of the VIP levels. And even then, for those of you that cannot see VIP 23, VIP 23 becomes visible once you reach VIP 17. So for lack of a better word, behind a paywall. Now, I know I already made a video covering Leonid's set, however... VIP 28 is a whole different ballpark because the only thing that you get that is in correlation to the set are the rest of the echoes to max out the call of reflection for the strongest purple reflection that there is in game. The other added bonus to this high tier is literally bragging right, a beautiful avatar frame, five UR concepts with your choice of one of the VIP ones, and this gorgeous, gorgeous profile card. As you can see, it is just gorgeous. It is animated. There's little feathers fluttering about. You can see the glittering and glistening of stars all around. Around the center where it says journey, there's an actual light shining. It is just so, so pretty. The gold glistens, little feathers pop out from your index score. It's just so, so lovely. And as far as the avatar frame goes, it's actually animated as well. As you can see, slightly, the wings and the halo do float. So this is basically your reward for spending over $15,000. As it currently goes, the total I've spent so far is roughly about $15,600, rounding up of course. And I know what you're thinking, Nightshade, this is not $29,000. Well, we're about to get to that. Some of you might be familiar with Love Nikki Dress Up Queen, Shiny Nikki's predecessor. The highest VIP tier in Love Nikki is VIP 15. You would have to spend a total of 350,000 VIP EXP in order to reach this tier. This is currently my screen in the game. As you can see, I have gone well up and beyond the 350,000 VIP EXP. Now the tiers here are on the cheaper spectrum. The highest tier, which is the VIP 15, of course, is $5,000. So if we do some quick math, multiply 350,000 times 3, that would be 1,050,000. As you can see, my current VIP EXP is 1,047,520, meaning that I am just 2,480 shy from reaching VIP 15 three times. So adding all that up, it's roughly about $14,000. <laughs> wow. So if I'm being quite honest, this video title is totally not clickbait because I literally have spent $29,000 on Nikki. Crazy, right? <laughs> So I know what you're thinking, Nightshade, how are you able to spend so lucratively? Are you a trust fund kid? Do your parents take care of you? And the answer to all that is no. <laughs> I wish that I was a trust fund kid so I didn't have to work so hard all of my life. I wish I had parents that would have taken care of me so I didn't have to work hard all of my life. Uh, so the answer to that is going to be answered with the response that you're probably like, why did you have to tell us this? But it's kind of relevant in a sense. I mastered in medieval archeology, span but I literally am not doing anything related to my career field. As it stands, and you're going to be surprised, but I actually work for a global retail company. 
At one point, I was actually a manager in the company, but they were unwilling to work with my availability schedule and thus set me up for failure, which is something I definitely did mention. And I was asked, what is it exactly that I wanted to do then? So I demoted myself. Now, 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 don't be sad for me. It actually ended up working pretty perfectly because now I am a incredibly highly overpaid employee. So not as much stress for the same pay, which is pretty cool if you ask me. <laughs> You're probably still thinking, well, it makes no sense. Some retail chains actually pay their managers pretty freaking well, enough to live comfortably. So when it comes to my finances, I make sure that everything is paid for before I spend on the game. I think a lot of times when people think about spending players in Nikki, I want to say they assume that it's mostly children or teens because who would play these type of games? But you would be surprised because a lot of adults actually enjoy playing games. We come from a point in time where that's what we grew up doing. And thus, here we are still to this day as a form to pass time, you know, leisurely, or some of us just hardcore get addicted. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong, openly discussing my spending habits does open a huge can of worms, which is exactly why I'm taking the time to explain to you what is it that I do and how long it's taken me to spend this much money, what were my motives for spending this money, etc. I feel like it's a hard topic to discuss because not a lot of people are open about how much they spend, how much actual money goes into their gaming habit. And I know that a lot of people actually get ashamed because of the number and they feel embarrassed. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we're all playing this game together. I know some people might question it. Some people might be like, oh my God, how do you even think to spend that much money? And I would do X with this money and I would do x with that money and i totally understand i mean at the end of the day your finances are your own you spend your money the way you want to but the same thing applies to me and the same thing applies to any other whale out there that is spending their money as they wish it's their money they can do whatever they want with it i think a lot of times the way that we start to think about things is in a logical sense, which of course we should be thinking things rationally and we should be prioritizing real life events and circumstances as opposed to those of pixelated clothing. But if you have the funds available after you've taken care of everything you need to take care of, how is this any different than you treating yourself out for food then you buying yourself a nice pair of shoes, then you buying yourself some clothes, then you buying yourself an outfit that you really like, going out and buying yourself a nice perfume or some makeup. Like, I understand that these are all tangible items. These are items that can be held and these are items that can be used on the daily. But the same thing applies to this game. You can log on on anywhere at any time on Nikki and play with the outfits. Whether you just want to be styling or you go on Reverie to display your creativity. And a lot of people don't only do this on Shiny Nikki, but they actually migrate to social media and they display their creations on their Instagrams, such as I did for a very long time. At the end of the day, this game to me always was an investment. I always saw it as me putting in money to my happiness because Nikki brought happiness. Nikki was a home away from home. Nikki always was a relief from the worries of the world. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with the saying, money does not buy happiness. And while I 50% agree to that sentiment, I can definitely tell you that it buys pixelated clothing and that pixelated clothing brought happiness to me. So now what? After all that is said and done, after I've spent all this amount of money, what comes next? Am I going to keep spending more? Do I keep spending more? What exactly are my plans? Because for the longest time ever, my goal was just to get to VIP 28. And I told myself that once I arrived to VIP 28, I would end up stopping my spending habits and just play leisurely. I wouldn't do every single event. I wouldn't get every single pack. I would just get whatever I liked, whatever I wanted. And for the most part, that's actually held up true. You haven't seen me for some time because I really just kind of lost that ambition, that dedication for the game. Because what was keeping me going 
was spending. And once I got to my goal, I reached my merit. I was kind of like, okay, well, now what? Again, <laughs> once again. Aside from that, other things started taking toll, such as, such as my own outlook on my social media as far as my reach goes here on YouTube. And the best way to explain this would be to give you a little bit more insight as to how my scheduling works. So as I previously explained, I do work a retail job, which means that I do have 40 hours a week and I get two days off. My two days off are not together, they are separate. So I do have to plan out my days as far as what I'm going to do with those two days given. As well, my work schedules are not early. I actually work late most of the times, can be anywhere from 12 p.m. to 11 p.m., 1 p.m. to 10 p.m., but that's typically my normal schedule. So I'm literally at work all day and I'm asleep in the mornings because I sleep real late. On top of that, my partner works 12 hour shifts for four days out of the week and he does not work in my city. He has to drive three hours away because we all know Texas is large as hell and getting anywhere takes a buttload of time. So he stays over in the city that he works in and he only comes back on his days off. So of course, on one of his days off, that aligns with one of my days off. That day is specifically for him so we can actually do stuff, you know, just enjoy each other's company, etc. So then that leaves me with one day off and that one day off has to encompass everything that I have to do, whether it's cleaning, whether it's maintaining my personal social media because I am a collector and I love collecting merchandise of various things. I watch anime, I read manga, I am obsessed with gacha games and I post all of these things that I, once again, frivolously spend my money on there. And shameless plug, but you can literally I know that the account has to be somewhere around on this screen. You'll be able to find it. Go ahead and give me a follow if you are into that type of stuff. But anyways, all that to say that I literally have less than 24 hours to do everything that I need to do as a person on a day off. My schedule recently changed sometime around the beginning of the year so that's one of the main reasons why there was a decline in my creation that decline in my creation led to less interaction whenever i actually would upload a video because the thing with all of these social medias is that you have to be constant with uploading you upload and you upload and that will actually keep up a record of your traction and it will let your content be seen by others and for those of us that cannot be constantly uploading, we just get the crap end of the stick. So it was really demotivating to me to be creating videos because it literally takes me a full day. Like, I don't know how people do it to edit videos and not take a full day. And I want to say that one of the main reasons why it takes me such a long time is because on top of doing the voiceover work and doing the whole editing, I love to make little fancy designs. Like I love to add a little spice to my slides and all of that. And I know that I don't have to do that. I know that I can forsake my editing quality, but I don't want to do that. Like I don't just want to run with the same template all the time. I don't just want to, you know, give you something that's like a... Uh, copy paste situation like i just i do want to do different templates all the time and that's just me personally because that's what i like that's what i would like to see but that would mean that i would have to take a whole day editing which is what i already do like it just doesn't sit well to me to forsake my editing quality because that's like something i pride myself on you know and i know that you guys probably don't care like you don't care how the video looks you don't care about the little fancy animations or anything like that and you guys would just rather see me be happy and whatnot and like i've literally thought about that and i keep telling myself that but i cannot like i start to edit a video and just leave it you know as it is but then i'm like ugh this looks too simple i can't so at the end whenever i do create a video i upload it 
And then I see the amount of views, the interaction that it got, and I'm like, well, this kind of sucks <laughs> because I took a whole day. I took so much time out of my day, time that I literally have very little of, and I got this in return. It just doesn't feel rewarding. So adding that to thoughts of you have invested too much time in Nikki and you have gotten nowhere. Like I don't have a huge following. I feel pretty unappreciated as a high spending player and a content creator. So it's like, what is the point of all of this? And that's basically the mentality that I had at the end of the day. And that's one of the reasons why I just kind of slowly slowly started falling off and not really caring anymore on top of everything else of course with work and school and boyfriend <sighs> so yeah guys before i got down to making a whole nother video i did want to have this video up to explain myself as to why you haven't seen me as to why i randomly pop up with content as to why i randomly disappear and to tell you that if you don't see me as much anymore that's why i also wanted this video to help serve as kind of a turning a new page of the book type of scenario because i do want to branch out to new content but I felt guilty doing so because it's like I haven't even explained to you why I haven't been uploading that much shiny Nikki content. And next thing you know it, I'm going to upload content for other games or for other things. And you would probably be wondering, well, where's the shiny Nikki content? And I'm, that's not to say that I'm going to stop playing shiny Nikki. I definitely am going to continue playing it. But it's just not as enjoyable as it once used to be because of this. Now, I want you to keep in mind that this is not something I am paid to do. I don't get a check in the mail or a direct deposit into my bank account for doing any of this. I do want to point out, though, that the total amount of money that I have spent would probably total more than $29,000. And that's because I am not counting giveaway money that has been out of my pocket. I am not counting all the official merchandise I purchased from Papers Overseas Direct website. I am not counting the funds I've invested in my alternate accounts. And I'm not counting the money I've invested on the Taiwanese servers. This started to feel like a part-time job, a part-time job for which I am not getting any gain, and it felt like I was basically just not appreciated. Now, I know that the later half of this video basically just seems like I'm whining, but I just wanted to offer you guys insight as to what exactly happened with me and why you haven't seen me around. I sound like a broken record player at this point so yeah guys thank you so much for coming to my ted talk expect to see more videos in the near future i am literally going to try to be active again on my gaming instagram so make sure to keep an eye out for that I am forever active on my personal Instagram because that literally just brings me joy. I mean, buying stuff always makes someone happy. You can't tell me no. So go ahead and check all of that out. For Discord, I know that I am dead in my server and I am so sorry for that, but my server is still up there in case you guys are interested. If you just want to talk with like-minded individuals like yourselves, or you could always message me on Discord if there's anything that you need to know as far as events go or any questions that you might have about the game. As usual, thank you guys so, so much for watching and for sticking by me, even though I'm kind of lame. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see y'all later. Bye!